Hello and welcome to All About Boston. I'm Seth McCoy. Tonight my guests are the other two candidates for District 9 seat, City Council seat, Mark Siomo, who is the current City Councilor, and Ben Narodic, who is a candidate for the District 9 seat. Last week, of course, we had Abigail Fury and Alex Selvig here to tell you, the voter at home who lives in District 9, why you should vote for them on September 22nd. If you're at home and you live in the district, or if you live anywhere in the city, you can call us up at 617-708-3290 to ask the candidates any question you have about why it is they're running, what issues are important to you, so on and so forth. So, guys, welcome to the show. Nice to see you again. <laughs> so, Councillor, I'm going to start with you. You obviously have been on the council now for two years, almost two mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. Why are you running for re-election? Well, as you know, I have over 20 years in public service, first uh, at the Jackson Man as a youth worker, a teacher, and then the assistant coordinator at the Jackson Man. Mm -hmm. From there, I became the director of the Veronica Smith Senior Center. And uh, I decided to run because I have a passion for my community. I was born and raised there. Uh, there's a lot of challenges facing our community right now. And I have a, a real handle on all the issues. and. Um, and the challenges that face us. And I feel like I have that uh, breadth of experience and knowledge of the community to listen to everyone's concerns and at the end of the day, make the, the best judgments uh, going forward for our, for our community and for the city of Boston as a whole. Okay, Ben, same question to you. Why are you running for a District 9 City Council seat? Well, again, thank you for having me. And uh, I'd say that I was really driven, obviously, by my love for the community. Alston Brian's been a great place, and it's uh, really inspired me to, to take a step forward and really help the community that, that I have so much appreciation for. Mm -hmm. And the more I started thinking about this and the more I started thinking about ways to give back, the more I realized there was a lot of shared concerns that a lot of people had. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people are concerned about housing, fair housing, and, and, and affordable housing in Alston Brighton. Right. Uh, a lot of people are concerned about closing storefronts and bringing business back to Alston. And, and public transit is a major issue too with the uh, commuter rail project mm -hmm. in Alston Brighton. And these are serious issues and I really feel like um, I have the best vision and, and the greatest dedication and I really feel like I can, feel like I can bring um, some fresh blood and some really great energy to the City Council. So Mark though, for argument's sake, is fresh blood since he's only been on the Council <laughs> for two years. What would you do differently than you see Councilor Siomo doing? I would take a much active role working with the community. It's, it's a matter about focusing on issues that um, are really affecting all residents and there are certain things like, like fair housing for example. Uh, there's, there's some serious issues as far as um, absentee landlords mm -hmm. and, and exploitive uh, realtors in our community and it's something that uh, people target low-income residents and they target uh, new residents, new immigrants, students and these are issues where you force these populations into pockets mm -hmm and it creates crime issues, it creates blight issues, it creates rodent and insect issues. And it's something that we haven't seen a lot of movement from the City Council on. These are issues that a lot of people feel like their, their, their problems are being marginalized. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are the concerns that, that people have been really bringing forward to me and it's frustrating to me too because I'm living through these personally. Right. And I think it's something that I can really bring a little bit more direction, a little bit more focus to these problems. Council, I'm sure you have your opinion of what you've been doing. So right. how do you rebut that, that claim? Well, I think I've been very active in the community in many ways for many years and uh, to address some of those issues, uh, housing issues, I've been working with the elderly for years, getting them housing opportunities and, and working with landlords. Lately, um, I'd like to uh, tell the accomplishment that I, myself, and, uh, and uh, Councillor Tobin, Councillor Feeney, uh, held a hearing to bring Boston Water and Sewer ISD together to share the property owner contact information. Mm -hmm. uh, much of the constituent work that I get is about party houses, trash, uh, and to have that in information working with uh, code enforcement, it's a combined effort. Mm -hmm. And I've established a, a mechanism so that people can go out to these properties, we identify the properties, we, we do more than just stick a ticket on them because that's not solving the problem, that's giving them a violation. Sometimes these absentee landlords never even get that ticket from the tenants. Mm -hmm. So we follow up, we go out to the property, we see the condition, we get code enforcement in, we have them call the, the owners, and if that doesn't work, I myself have taken an active role in calling property owners. And I have to say, 95% of the time when you contact a property owner, whether it's an issue of uh, not shoveling their sidewalk, which we get all the time, mm -hmm. um, 
the senior citizens, for example, from Wallingford Road that, that need to get to the temple or to the T-stop, and there's uh, several property owners that don't uh, shovel their walk. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, just putting a ticket on their door doesn't solve the problem. It gives revenue to the city. Right. But I call the owners and I say, you need to do something. If it's not done within 24 hours, we're going to keep fining you. And 95% of the time, they respond. They want to uh, do the right thing. But we have a low owner occupancy rate in Alston Brighton. It's traditionally been around the 20%. So we've traditionally had a lot of absentee landlords. And it is and a challenge. That's a big issue for the